So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to do dirty glass. So dirty glass is really helpful to know how to draw because it makes things look worn or used. Like this lantern right now either looks like it doesn't have glass or it's brand, brand new and it has crystal clear glass over top of it. So to make dirty glass, let's just start color picking this green color. And it doesn't really matter what color you start out with, but green is a good, because this is like the main color that's behind your dirty glass. I'm just going to backspace here. So before, before you paint anything, make sure you make a new layer, because I accidentally started to paint on my background layer. That's really important so that you can erase at any point in time the things you don't want. So to make a new layer, just hit this little plus icon right here. So on this new layer, just pick that green color and paint in or blend in this green along the corners of the back pieces of glass. So right now we're just painting the back of the lantern. So there's going to be this glass piece and then this glass piece that's like behind the candle. And we're going to color in with this 30% green brush. I'm just going to color in this green right along the edges and the corners of the glass. So coloring in the edges and the corners of the glass is what's going to make it look dirty because that's where dust and smoke debris and all sorts of things will collect easier. And the middle of the glass will be more transparent because that's the area where dust usually doesn't collect as easy. So we're just going to go right along the corners and edges with this green color. And then where it's not on the edge, we're going to blend the colors a little bit. So just color pick one of the brighter colors and blend the background so that you can't see the grass through it because we still want the middle to be dirty as well. It could be completely transparent, but for this tutorial, we're going to have it a little bit dirty still. And when anything's dirty, it's going to not be as transparent. And so you won't be able to see the grass behind the glass. Don't worry about being too neat because we can go back with the eraser after and erase parts. Dirty glass will also pick up more light. So even though there was really dark colors behind this glass, I'm going to color pick this green and add more green to it because the more texture or the more dirt glass has on it, the more it will hold on to the light and it will light up the glass more. Instead of the light going through and lighting up the environment, it's going to light up the glass instead. So. It's also going to be a little bit brighter color. So just on these two back windows, it's going to be a darker color than along the edges because the edges are picking up even more light, but it's going to be brighter than the background behind the glass. And with a 10% eraser, we can erase a little bit behind so that it shows a little bit of transparency behind the glass. And then we can go back with the green color. Let's go to a full brightness green. So I have the green right at the tip of that triangle. And then we can go back to that green and paint in the corners again. You can just go back and forth between painting the edges and erasing a little bit so you keep a little bit of transparency. And then you can color pick this green and actually make it a more yellow color and maybe make it more whitish yellow. And where it's really dirty, we're going to add some yellow color because the thicker the dust is, the more light it's going to pick up. So the yellow light coming from this lantern or this candle in the lantern is going to pick up even stronger on the edges. So we're also going to do the same up here. So let's pick a green color and 
at 30% opacity, we're going to color in these back windows as well with this green. You can see here it's a complete blue background, but the light is going to shine up and reflect off this glass, even though it's farther away from the candle and it has a complete blue background, it's gonna be a green color because it's picking up that light from that candle. And if you feel like you want it a bit more transparent, just go to your eraser by hitting the E and at 30%, or let's go to 10% to just do it really slowly you can erase and bring back that transparency and that will bring back that blue that's behind that glass. And then with your eraser, you can just go through and erase the parts that you painted over that you don't want. Like this candle, you're gonna erase and keep that a pure color because you're doing the glass behind the candle, you're not painting the candle at all. And also the edges of this lantern. And you can also, if there's a little area that you didn't paint all the way, you can just color pick that color and just paint it in as well because sometimes you might not paint it in perfectly. And so to touch it up, you can just color pick. So after you got what looks good to you, we're going to make a new layer and we're going to make the front glass of this lantern. So to make the front glass, we're going to add some color to the edges of the glass in front. So you can just pick a green color or a yellow color. It doesn't really matter what you start out with because you can change it along the way. Let's just do a greenish yellow color. And along the edges of the front glass, I'm just going to go right along the corners. And you notice here when I'm painting the corners, it's not like a 90 degree angle it's gonna collect in the corners more. So it's actually gonna like curve and the whole corner is gonna be filled with dirt or dust or smoke debris because smoke will also collect in the corners like the debris from the smoke. So adding this detail to this glass is just gonna make the lantern look like it's not right out of the store. It's not brand new. It's been used and it has some buildup of some dirt and smoke debris. This is usually what people see when they see a lantern that's not brand new. There's going to be this kind of layer around the corners of the glass. I'm going to go over with a 30% brush and just make, let's go to pure yellow. I'm just going to make a make a yellow flare across the whole window. This will make the whole window have a little bit of dirt on it. Because like I said, you know, the whole window can be dirty, just the middle is going to be less dirty. So there's not going to be a lot of green in the front windows versus the back windows because, you know, the background isn't as close to the grass or that bright green grass behind it. And also, the light is heading out towards the viewer, so it's going to be more yellow. Like You're going to be able to see the light on the front windows more clearly, so it's just going to be a brighter color. It's going to be a more yellow color. And if you want, you can also make the colors on the very edge more orange, and that's going to indicate just thicker dust and debris. And it could also have a little bit of black in it. So not just like a bright, bright orange. So to blend these colors together, you can just color pick one color and then with 30%, just brush over the other color and then you can color pick that color and brush over the yellow color. You know, you just go back and forth. And um, that's my technique for blending the colors. And at any time, if you feel like you're putting too much opaque colors, like too much dust, just go to your eraser again by hitting the E on your keyboard, and then you can just erase it, make it more transparent. You could do some more of that yellow flare over everything in some areas, because dust isn't going to collect evenly across everything. 
So it's good to have areas where there's more dust or smoke, debris, smoke buildup, I guess, and some areas where there's not. Just the basic principle that there's going to be less in the middle than on the edges. That's what's really going to make it look like it's dust and not just foggy glass. The eraser I'm just going through and just erasing it a little bit. I don't want to go too overboard with this color because I don't want, I still want to be transparent. And with this eraser, I'm also erasing the yellow flare I did, so I'll have to go back and redo that because I didn't do the yellow flare on a different layer. Might be a good idea in the future to do it on a new layer just so I can touch up these corners easily without having to erase my flares of color, but either way, it's pretty simple to go back and do. Let's go to a more yellow color. Paint some yellow right at the edges. It's really just going back and forth until you get the look you want. Because dust can be different types of dust, different thicknesses, different places it's going to be potentially. So it doesn't have to be a particular way. It's just until it looks good to you and looks natural. Let's do that yellow flare again. Right over the entire glass. It's going to make it look like it's dirty all the way across, at least a little bit. And then we're going to do the top as well. So let's do a yellow color and Paint along the edges up here. It's pretty simple to do. Gives a nice used look to this lantern. Let's color in this yellow flare over the top here. And then with our eraser, we can just erase the parts that we went outside of the lantern. It doesn't have to be perfect because sometimes there's, like I could even leave this flare right here if I wanted because sometimes the light when the lantern's really dirty or if it's foggy outside, it's going to pick up some of that yellow light anyway. So if you want the outside of your lantern to look like the air outside to be foggy, you could even keep some of these flares of yellow outside the lantern. But for this tutorial, just keep it nice and clean and just keep it on the windows. So right here to touch this up, I could just color pick this color and just paint over and touch it up with that color. And then just color pick that yellow and paint back. Kind of smooth out my brush strokes and get the colors where I want it. We can make some thinner dust along the edges here so it's a little bit more transparent than the very edge. It's going to make it look more realistic if there's different variations of dust. So there's thinner places and thicker places, especially if it's getting thinner, the more it gets to the middle because it's dust isn't going to collect in the middle of the glass as easy. And if you ever paint someplace you don't want or if you erase someplace that you don't want, just hit control and then Z and that will be an undo button. One thing you can also do is add a little bit of white to your candle afterwards once you're all finished. And this will just keep your candle or the flame of your candle looking more bright and less muted from that dust over top because sometimes the pure color of the lantern will shine through even through the dust. So you can make like a little flare or something right on the candle. 
doesn't have to be everywhere on the candle though. Like it won't be as white as it was with the crystal clear glass. So you still want to keep a little bit of that yellow in the flame. Just adding a little bit of orange right to this edge just to make it look a little bit thicker. Right on the edge. Add a little bit of variation. And maybe I'll add a little bit more yellow up here because it doesn't look like there's a ton of yellow up in that corner right there. We'll just color pick this green. So color picking helps me so that I don't have to redo those yellow flares that I did. You know, instead of erasing those flares, I can just color pick the color right by it and just tone down that green or that yellow dust corner. All right, so that looks pretty good. So this example still has some transparency, so you can still see the candle through it, but it does have dust around the corners. So in my next example, I'm going to show you how to do a really dirty lantern that's like hasn't been cleaned for a long time. So to do a really dirty lantern, we're just going to make another layer. So just hit your plus icon here in the right corner of your Photoshop page. And we're going to add even more dust to these windows. So when you add so much dust that there's no transparency, you're not going to have to worry about doing the back windows because you won't even see those. Paint right over the front windows with this bright yellow color. It's just going to completely cover this candle up and everything behind it. There's not going to be any transparency. Light is still going to be able to travel through, which is why it's bright yellow compared to like pitch black, but it's not going to be transparent, at least to the point of being able to see anything behind it. So with this yellow color, I'm just going to each of my windows. Don't worry about being too clean right now because we can always go back with the eraser and clean up our edges so it's okay if you go a little bit outside the lines here just get in this bright yellow color and then to make sure that this isn't mistaken for like a yellow glass or a foggy yellow glass we're going to add dark orange and we're going to color around the corners of this glass just like we did before it's just going to be an orange color instead of a yellow color because this is a lot thicker dust and smoke debris on this glass. We're just going right along the edges and then filling in these corners and so it kind of makes a circle in the middle because the corners are going to fill in very easily and make everything else kind of in a curved shape. And we'll just paint the sun really quickly. Don't have to be too worried about getting everything right right now because we're going to do some other stuff as well. So after you got the edges painted in with orange, we're going to blend this yellow and orange together. So let's just pick a color that's between these two colors. So it's probably going to be like a yellow orange and it's just going to be at full brightness and we're going to stay at 30% opacity. So just with this yellow orange, just paint in and blend these colors together. You don't have to blend it in every part because that's going to look better if you don't do it everywhere or you blend it out more in one area than another area. So like maybe this yellow flare is not going to be right in the center of my candle, you know, because this orange comes down more. It's probably actually going to look better because it's dust isn't very uniform. It's not perfect going to form in some areas more than other areas. And then I can color pick this yellow color and just paint in some more yellow if I want a little bit more transparency so that there's not so much dust that it's dimming this light yellow color. And then at the very edges we're going to color pick this orange and we're going to make it more red and also more black. So just move your slider down more to the black corner of this triangle. And we're going to color in a red color. 
right along the corners because when dust gets illuminated it sometimes turns red like that's its glowing color just add it in a few places don't have to be super careful right now because we're going to go back and do some adjustments and touch-ups we're just getting the colors down right now and then we're also going to add some more black to this so where it's really dark and it's so dark that it doesn't get illuminated as much. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to just paint a little bit more orange because I think I lost most of my orange. I covered it up with red. So I'm going to go back with orange and just paint in a little bit more orange into the red and into the yellow. So if you paint orange into like really dark red that has black in it, it's going to make a brown color. And in this case, you might want a little bit of brown in your picture because we're painting dirt. So it's okay if you paint or have some brown in your colors. I'm just color picking back and forth so I get the right combination of colors that I like. Just going with a really bright orange, like a yellow orange, and then going with a really bright yellow, painting that in. And then I'm going to add some more black to this dust here, because the more value you add, the more it's going to look like it's really dirty along the edges or the smoke debris has really built up on the glass. So you just color pick different colors and then paint it over other colors and that will blend those colors together. This is really just a lot of experimenting and just painting back and forth. I'm going to clean up these edges by just erasing where I went outside the lines just so it doesn't get looking too messy. Then I'm just going to go back to blending the colors together. The more variation of how you blend and like having a different types of blends, different variations of colors is going to make it look the best. So that's why I'm just going back and forth and trying to get different variations of these colors. And I'm always going over here and making, so like when I color pick this, it's like not a pure color. So I'll move it to a pure color and it will bring back that pure orange that sometimes gets lost when you're blending these dark reds and oranges together. And that will just add even another color variation and keep your colors a little bit more bright and beautiful. Because I always like my paintings to look more pretty or bright and saturated than not. Unless there's a specific reason for it. Like you want it to look really gloomy or something. And the yellow is going to be in different places. And the oranges are going to flare out in different places. And just the more variation of that that you can add, the more natural it's going to look. I'll just keep color picking and blending. Just color in these front windows. And maybe to add some variation, instead of making this red, let's just make it orange. Because maybe not all the corners are so dirty that it makes that dark orange color. Maybe some edges are a little bit more clean and not so thick. Add some more bright orange in this area. Let's go to pure brightness. So right here it looks a little bit gloomy. So add some of that bright orange. Give some color variation over in this area. You could even do like an orange flare. Kind of flare it out. You do an orange flare by just making your brush soft and then making it bigger. Gives a different way that you're blending these colors. So that's not all the same blending technique. You can add a little bit more yellow if you think you 
painted too much orange. You can change your opacity up so that you can just softly paint in colors. Goes back to the same principle, you know, just changing up the way you're blending. I'm just going to flip my canvas real quick. So if you don't know the shortcut or if you haven't designed a shortcut for it, you can just go to image and then image rotation and flip canvas horizontal. And this helps me get a different perspective on the lantern to see if there's anything I should change on it. Because sometimes you start looking at it a certain way for so long that you can't see if there's anything that you need to change or if there's anything that's wrong with it. So flipping your canvas just helps you get a different perspective. It also helps you draw differently because you're drawing in a different direction for the same shape. So like if you're right-handed or something, it sometimes makes it easier to paint things are on the left side, you know, if you just flip it and so it's then on the right side and you can paint those shapes easier. Let's flip it back. So on this side I might bring up my orange just a little bit farther. And on this side I might bring my orange down a little bit lower. Just so like there's variation. It doesn't have to be the same height. It's really just about experimenting though because you can try things out and then you go back on it because you're like, eh, maybe I like it the other way or that wasn't actually a good idea. So sometimes it's really just about going back and forth and also looking at your navigator tab here. I'm always looking over there because this navigator tab will show your picture from a distance. And that's where you're really going to be able to see if something's wrong. So right here I'm even painting a, like an orange with a little bit of white in it. That just adds a little bit of color variation. So all my colors aren't completely saturated. They have white in it. They have black in them. Then there's pure colors. There's a variation of all those. That's what's going to add some realism to your dust in your glass here. And to make sure you have lots of hues in your painting, you know, a good thing to do is if you make your color darker, add some red to it. You know, it doesn't have to always have red in it, but some of your dark colors should have red in it because then it will add a different hue to your painting. And then if your colors are lighter, it's going to have a more yellow color. Because this wouldn't look nearly as good if you just had an orange and then you had a lighter orange with like white and then orange with black in it, you know. It looks a lot better when you have yellow, orange, and red in the values of that dark and light. So you can just color pick or color pick and then adjust the colors to make it slightly different or more back to a pure color or whatever value or hue you think you're missing. You can just add those colors right back in. So I hope this video helped you to better understand how to paint dirty glass in Photoshop. Here are some more tutorials on glass that you can learn from if you're interested, and I'll see you next time.